Amen. We ready? ready. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank you, God. Hallelujah. I'm going to just open up with a word of prayer and we'll go on and get started in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, oh God. I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that you are with us, oh God. And we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, because you are a great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you and I praise you, Father God. Hallelujah for your son, oh God, in the name of Jesus that came, Father God, and dwelt among us, oh God. I thank you, God, that you understand everything about us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, every heartbreak, everything that we've gone through, oh God, every area that we've stumbled, oh God, everything that we we are concerned about, oh God. We just thank you, God, that you are with us, God. Hallelujah. There's more. You're more. Hallelujah. Then who is against us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask you to touch me right now from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, oh God. I ask you to take over, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Take over, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With, oh God, and let me only speak what you want me to yes, speak God. in the name of yes, Jesus. God. Form every word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you that it would come forth with power and might, oh God, and yes, it would God. fall on only good ground, oh God, yes. and spring it forth in due season according to your will, oh God, yes, God, in your people's lives, oh God. These are your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we just thank you and we thank praise you. you for victory. Thank you, Lord. We thank you and praise you for deliverance, oh God. We thank you and praise you for just releasing any bondages and chains, oh God, that would try to hinder the move of God in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen Amen. and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give him a praise on Zoom. Hallelujah. He is a great, big, wonderful God in the name of Jesus. And his word is our basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And we just thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Good morning, everybody on Zoom land. We praise and we just thank you for your attendance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is been an amazing uh, year um, in the word of God, and I've been um, blessed to study a bit about the book of Ephesians. Amen. It's a short book, six chapters, but power packed in the name of Jesus. And this is, I don't know, maybe this might be the last time I come before you, except for when we do our uh, Sunday school teachers uh, panel, but praise the Lord. So we're on the home stretch. Amen. And so Ephesians was written written by Paul in approximately 60 to 61 AD from a prison cell. Amen. Paul was a great man of God. He was the least likely candidate to turn his life over to Christ. Amen. And he is amazing. Amen. And he gives me hope. Amen. For those that we're praying for to come through in the things of God and be saved. Amen. Amen. If God can save him, he can save anyone. Amen. Amen. That's right. He called himself the chief of sinners. So he was a bad dude. Amen. Amen. On his way to Damascus, Paul had every intention on continuing his vicious plans to stop Christians. But instead, God had a plan. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to need you to be interactive with me. Amen. Because we're going to go into some deep subjects today. Amen. Amen. And so pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. (laughs) But Jesus intervened in Saul's life in a powerful way that would forever change his life and his mission. 
we know that he wrote two thirds of the Bible. Amazing, 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 right? He was killing Christians. He was doing probably things we can't even imagine, amen? But God saved him. Amen. And here we are at Ephesians, a small um, but, uh, book of the Bible, contains six chapters like mentioned, but powerful, giving us words to live by. We talked about Ephesians being divided into three themes, the three W's, the wealth, the walk, and the warfare, amen? And the wealth that talks about who, who we are in God, we're sitting in spiritual places with God, amen? The walk, the duty of man, and the warfare, the fight, amen? Paul's goals in writing this letter were general encouragement. He seeks to articulate the mystery of the gospel, which has now been revealed in Ephesians 3. He uses imagery and lofty language. The Old Testament's um, and powerful recorded prayers to convey how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is for us. Amen. So how many of y'all like sports? <laughs> I know we have some football junkies in the house today. Amen. And we probably got them on Zoom. I can't see who's on, but praise the Lord. Put it in the chat if you like football. Amen. So we sometimes you can't make the game, right? You have, you know, you want to go to the game or you might even watch it, but we in church, we, we go miss the game. Amen. But some of us got direct TV and on direct TV, we got the NFL network, which will play the repeats of the game. All right. The entire game. Amen. Technology is a cool thing, but because of technology, you you might already know the outcome of the game, right? But you might still want to watch it, right? Mm -hmm. So because we watch the game at times in full knowledge of how it will end up, it often changes how we will react to what is happening during the game because we have pre-knowledge of what how it will end up. Amen? Knowledge is a wonderful thing especially when you know in advance. So when you've been given inside knowledge, check this out. It doesn't change fumbles. It doesn't change the interceptions. It doesn't change the tackles. You can look at it differently because you know the outcome. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So imagine Seahawks play the game you know they're going to win. You have pre-knowledge that they're going to win the game. Amen? You, But you haven't seen the game. But you go home and you watch the game. Every tackle, every fumble, you're going to respond differently because you already know they won the game. And such as us, we already know we win. Amen? Amen. So you can look at it differently because you know the outcome. So if I were to entitle this message, I would entitle it, Are You Dressed? Are you dressed with your spiritual clothes on? All right? And those of you in the house, I'm going to need you to be interactive with me. Amen? So we're going to talk about the full armor of God and hence why I wore my camo shirt today as a representation of battle and being in our full armor. So we go to Ephesians 6, verse 10, starting at verse 10. Finally, 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 be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but, we, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers 
over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all and been having to having done all to stand firm stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances in all circumstances take up the shield of faith which is which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints amen stand firm stand firm we don't have to trip about what's happening around us he is reminding us that we are in battle. Paul wants us to know that everything visible and physical is preceded by something that is not, that is invisible and is spiritual. So Paul wants you to know that the attack that's visible and physical you need to do it if you want to attack it, right? You want to do it from a perspective that is invisible and from a spiritual perspective. Perspective. He gives you the term throughout the book of Ephesians of heavenly places. Heavenly places is referring to the spiritual realm. And what he's saying is that when you're under assault, your life is being shattered, you're trying to be in the will of God. You're trying to walk with God, but you're being attacked. Your well-being is being attacked, right? That's an area of our well-being. Our dreams can be attacked. Our wealth could be being attacked. Your family could be being attacked. Your physical body could be being attacked. You're under assault. And he says, during those times, you have to view things from the location of heavenly places or the spiritual realm. If you're going to be strong and walk through it, you have to be able to walk through those times of attacks. And he wants you to set the plan in place of how you're going to make it in the evil day. So for the... For those of us in the evil day, this word will matter to you. And for those who have not been in the evil day, keep living because it's coming. When you're under assault and your assault in your stability um, of your world is being shaken, he says during those times, three times he says, I want you to stand. I want you to stand firm. Don't quit. Don't give up. Because the temptation is during these hard times is that you would throw in the towel when your world is collapsing all around you, right in front of your eyes. Amen. And so we know even people in the ministry under assault right now but God. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. He says, the first thing I want you to understand in this scripture is that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Amen. In other words, people aren't our source of the problem. Even though we might want to act in a physical way, we may want to knock the spit out of them. I'll just say that. No. <laughs> Amen. But they're not the enemy. And I often say, I often say it sometimes you have to look beyond the person and realize where it's coming from. Amen. And that can be difficult to do. They might be being used as a conduit for your problems, but they're not the source of your problem. So as Christians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and world forces that are located in heavenly places or in the spiritual realm. Amen. And I would encourage you to do your own research on this, that just that one fact that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and world forces. You would be amazed because I've done some research. There's a lot that goes on that we would have no idea mm -hmm. in high places against the men and women of God. When you're under the fire of oppression, when you're under the fire and the just disparity of the evil one, when you're under a demonic attack, when you're under the fire of suffering, you can take a stand because we know that Jesus Christ has already burned for you where Jesus Christ, meaning he's already suffered for you. Amen. And that, and you need to grab a hold of that strength that the Lord has to offer. We don't need to run away with it when you're in the evil day. You're when you, but we want to run to God. So we don't run from the battle, we run to God. Because you know that you would be in spiritual warfare. When your world is being attacked in whatever way it is being attacked, that's not the time to run from him again, but to him. It is not time to evade him. It is time to embrace him. So he says, stand firm, hold on to your faith in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of suffering and in the midst of the struggle. So I've had times in my life when the opposition was so difficult that physically I could feel the force against my physical body where it was like wearing weights mm -hmm. because of the ap opposition that I was facing. And I've seen the devil face to face and God has allowed me to um, really see spiritual warfare one on one. Talking, having that in my face through a person, amen? And most people haven't had that challenge, right? We think about, you know, before that, I didn't really know, I mean, this is years ago that the devil, I mean, we know he's real, but it's one thing to go through and see that he's real. Through some, a person talking in third person completely taken over by the enemy, amen? Mm -hmm. But God allowed that because I have a mission, amen? amen? And so when he tells us to dress for spiritual success, he gives you the armor of God and tells you, I want you to get dressed for battle. 
Now, when you're in a war and when you're in or at a parade, so at a, you know, a military parade, they show weapons, right? But when you're in the war, you use your weapon because the because you're in the evil day. It's not showtime at the Apollo. You're actually in the evil day. Amen. So this is when you get dressed, you put on truth, you put on righteousness, and you put on peace. He goes on and he says, you got to put on faith. He says, you got to put on the helmet of salvation. And then he says, you have to put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He gives us six pieces of spiritual arsenal or armor that the believer is to utilize when it comes to taking a stand on the evil day and when you're under attack and the spiritual oppression that's affecting your physical, your financial, your circumstantial, your emotional, your family. Take a stand harder than you've ever taken it before and just stand. Put on this armor, but you may not remember all the pieces of the armor. And I think it's interesting because he says, put on. So one thing that we have to realize, God is not going to put it on for us. Amen. He's commanding us to put on the full armor of God. Amen. So he's given us six pieces. But what if you don't remember all of them? So let's make it easy because Romans chapter 13, verse 14 says, put on Christ. So if you can't remember them all, remember this one, put on Christ. Why? Because I want you to put on truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I want you to put on righteousness. Scripture says, Christ is our righteousness. He says, put on peace. Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation, but I give you my peace. Amen. He says, put on the helmet of salvation. Scripture is clear. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our salvation. Then he says, put on the word of God. So use the sword of the spirit. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Amen. So we can't separate the word from God. Amen. So it reminds me of ISIS in three different forms, right? Water is. We have liquid water, we have ice, and we have steam. Amen? But that means it's still H2O. When you do, if you like chemistry and you do the chemical or whatever, the, for, the formula, it's still the same. It's just all in different forms. Amen? Mm -hmm. So this is powerful. This word is God. Amen? And he, he created the world through his spoken word, which was him. Amen. So that's a deep revelation in and itself. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, he is the word. So if you can't remember truth, righteousness, peace, remember, or, or Jesus, if you, if you don't remember faith, remember Jesus. If you don't remember the helmet of salvation, remember Jesus. If you don't remember the, the scriptures, just remember Jesus because Jesus is the full armor of God. Put on Christ. You become, when you do that, you become centered in him. And that's not just a belief in God, amen? This is the center of God's son who is the revelation of God and the manifestation of God that came down and dwelt among us. And what I love about 
him even doing that is because now you have God that can understand the frailty of human existence. Amen. He can understand when we're sad. He can understand when we're angry. He can understand when we're discouraged. Amen. Because he came here in human form and dwelt among us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's put on Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, if you want to do it all the time, well, let me let me step back a minute. So we know that he's the center, God's son, who is the revelation of God, the manifestation of God, who is the power of God to manifest himself, particularly in the evil day. Amen. Now you want to do it all the time, but you better do it in the evil day. Amen. That's when we know that the doctors, they don't have the answers. Our banking system doesn't have the answers. The government doesn't have the answers. Amen. Our friends don't have the answers. Our family definitely don't have the answers. And we sure enough don't have the answer. Amen. You need to be centered in the person of Christ, amen, and all the tools that he offers you, but he says you got to put them on, amen. So what sense does it mean if I have tools that God has given me, but I refuse to put them on? There's time out for excuses. There's no more excuses anymore. We've been equipped with everything we need is in God, amen? And it cracks me up because people can sit under the word and still not execute in their life. They, You look at their life and they're still in the same position that they were 10, 15, 20 years ago because they haven't worked the word, amen, as Elder Stubblefield preached, that they heard. It's time to stop with the excuses, amen? and put on the full armor, put on and utilize it, the tools that God has given us. Amen. So then the question is, well, how do you put them on? <laughs> That's where verse 18 comes in. Let me read it again. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. The way you put on Christ, that is practically utilize him to equip you to move through the battle you face, is with prayer. This is relational communication with God. Amen. Sometimes we think we need to be all eloquent and fancy with prayer. We don't. We can come to him boldly and ask for what we need. Amen. A lot of people want to prayer, um, pray when they're in spiritual warfare um, who have not prayed until they got into warfare. Amen. Say amen or ouch. <laughs> amen. So in other words, they don't know how to stand strong in the Lord because they haven't been standing with the Lord but now they're in an emergency. He's talking about staying in touch with him all day long, amen? And sometimes I just be like, Lord, just help me, amen? And I thank God that he knows what that means. He knows everything about me. So if I'm having difficult times, I don't have, I don't have the fancy words or the fancy prayer I'm just like, Lord, help me. And praying in the spirit, amen? That's the language between you and God that the enemy can't tap into, amen? Praise the Lord. So let's stay in touch with him all day. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray without ceasing. In other words, stay in touch with me. Now let's explain why that's so important. The evil day is principalities, powers, and world forces. This means you're under attack, coming from places that you would have no idea about. 
Christians have lost sight of demons. Demons are angels that eventually just went crazy and went rogue, right? They are fallen angels. But you know what? Um, you know, their job is to, their spiritual mafia that, that attack us, they can bring pain in the physical, but the Bible has the answer to them. Um, the answer to demons are angels. Um, so this is how it works. The Bible declares every Christian has angels assigned to them. And the job of an angel is to look after our well-being of the believer. So we can utilize our angels to go before us and fight on our behalf. And I remember Pastor Hackett always, you know, sending Michael, the archangel, to, to war and fight. Amen. And so we can ask our angels to go before us and fight for us. Amen. And the Bible says when we pray, we engage God and the Holy Spirit. And, and we'll talk about him in just a moment who activates the angels assigned to you to deal with the demonic oppression that is coming against you. So he says with all perseverance, perseverance, but he tells you something else that's the key is to pray in the spirit. Amen. So don't, you know, we, we can have a conversation with God. We can talk in English. But if God has given us the spirit, why not pray in the spirit? Amen. It's for our benefit because oftentimes we don't know what to pray. We think we know what to pray in our little earthly minds, but actually a lot of times we don't. And God sees the big picture anyway, which we don't. So we would encourage you to pray in the spirit, develop your prayer language. Amen. Between you and God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's between you and God. Hallelujah. And I just think that that's so special. I mean, imagine that a language between you and God that the enemy can't hear and he can't penetrate that. Let's utilize our prayer life. Amen. Amen. Right. So the role, so praying in the spirit, what does that mean? The Bible talks about the role of the spirit is to deliver the mind of God. Amen. So the mind of God, right? So like, like I said, we just, we don't know what to pray, but we want to pray because it, we want to deliver the mind of God. Um, praise the Lord. This is like heavy, heavy meat, amen. All right, so God revealed um, his purpose through the spirit. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So see, when you're in the evil day, that means folks can't help you. Um, in the evil day, they have limitations for what they can do for you. Um, and you need something that I have not seen nor ear hath heard and the, Im the imagination is not conceived of. You need supernat the supernatural to enter the natural. You need divine intervention. Being in the spirit as opposed to the scripture is to being in the flesh, to be in the spirit. So let's start with that principle. He wants us to be in the spirit. Amen. He wants you to operate in the world of, in, in the realm of the spirit. What is the realm of the spirit? It's the soup, it's the spiritual mindset. Amen. So in Romans chapter eight, verses one to 13, you can read it later. He gives us this extended discussion about the spirit and says, when you have the spirit, you have the mind of the spirit. So this has to do with how you're thinking. The mind is your thought. He wants you to think spiritually, not secularly. He wants you to think biblically, not worldly. He wants you to think the mind of Christ, not the mind of man. Amen. 
And so I remember when um, at the old church, when I got uh, the Holy Ghost, that whole experience was like super amazing because like dad was like, um, we were talking about the Holy Ghost and he was talking about like stammering lips, how that's close, but that's not the full, um, you know, overtaking of his spirit. And I was like, well, I stammer, but you know, he was, and he was like, well, that's not the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And I'm, he's like, who wants the Holy Ghost? And I was like, I do. And a bunch of us raised their hand. We got, went up to that altar. We tarried. And I swear, like within, I don't know, it was like five minutes for me. It just took me over. And it was so amazing because it just felt like, I could just feel like the spirit of just God just coming and flowing through me for like an hour. And I was telling God in my language, everything that I had dealt with from a baby all the way to that current point in time. And it had me, it was like a conversation of all the disappointments, all the heartache, all of the ups, all of the downs. And he understood even though I didn't know what he was saying, it was just like a complete release of just everything that was negative in my life. And when I came up, I felt so strong. Like, like I I always say this, like I could have jumped off the empire state building and been fine. That's how, can you imagine that? Like the spirit overtaking you to that level and these they laughed at me and said I was rolling on the floor and I was the same color as the carpet. I was like red or orange or whatever. <laughs> That's what Bishop said. But I felt like the power of God that I could have gone out and conquered the world. And he wants us to stay in that. Amen. With God's spirit, we can do anything because his spirit created the earth. Imagine what we can do. We have the very God that created this. Amen. Created us. We can do anything. Let's stop. And I'm talking to myself too. Having a defeated mindset. I don't want anybody else in this ministry to ever say I'm broke again. Remove that from your vocabulary. You're not broke. You're rich in him. Work the words you heard. Amen. We've been given gold nuggets. And I was thinking about this with mom not being here. And I felt in my spirit, we've been given everything that we need to live the remainder of our days. If that would not been so, she would still be here. Amen. No more excuses. Amen. Amen. We can conquer the world through him. Work the word that you've already heard. Amen. Let it be in you. Amen. We're not defeated. Whatever the enemy comes, he comes for a few reasons to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. Amen. Those are the three reasons why he comes. And we know that he is a liar and he's a father of all lies. So we know that when we get attacked, there is an assault. There is an assignment that he uses to come against us. And I bind anything right now in the name of Jesus that would come to dwarf this word, that would come to steal it in the name of Jesus. Satan, you are a lying foe. I cancel your assignment right now in the name of Jesus. And I cast you right now to the lake of fire in Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you one other thing about how, how this works. I had just started my Christian walk and God gave me a dream. And in the dream, there was, it was standing room only. And there was people all around me, all different colors, all nationalities, just people all over the place. And I would pray for them, laying hands on them and rebuking the devil 
I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And when I would reach out to them and touch their head and I and what what's crazy about the dream, which it was not crazy, but it's just amazing to me. I hadn't even heard that statement before. So we know that's God. Amen. When I would lay hands on them with a person with blue eyes, they would come up or their eyes would be completely black. I would pray for them and then they would be blue. I would pray for brown. The person had black eyes, then it would be brown. So whatever that spirit was, was coming off of them. And I just kept doing it over and over and over. When I woke up, I was physically tired. But we know that that was a spiritual dream to come. God was showing me to come, right? Because I had never even heard of Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Never. I had just started going to church. But God had a plan in the name of Jesus. And I just thank him, God. You never know what your struggles are for. It's for somebody else in the name of Jesus. So we have to be encouraged. Certain thing I've gone through, people I can reach, maybe you're not able to reach because they don't, they don't connect with you in that way. But that's why he's made us all different. Amen. I work on being my authentic self. I can't be Pastor Hackett. I can't be Bishop Hackett. Amen. I can't be Pastor Harris or Sister Cherie. Amen. I can only be Tracy. Amen. He made me for a time and a season. Amen. And we want to utilize that time and season between the dash. Amen. Because our days are numbered and they're numbered by him. Amen. And I don't even know where I'm at. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we know that the battle between the spirit and the flesh. Amen. So let us define flesh is a desire to please self independently of God. Amen. The flesh is a, is a, a desire to please yourself as opposed to pleasing God. And we all battle with it. And if anyone says that they don't, they lie in and they need more deliverance because we all have something that we are working on. Amen. So we were to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Amen. He didn't say you wouldn't have the desire because the flesh wants what it wants. Amen. He said you will have the desire, but the spirit will override it. Amen. So to get rid of the desire of the flesh, walk in the spirit. Right? That's backwards. So walk in the spirit and it will overrule the desire of the flesh. Amen. 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 The capacity to do what you need to do or what God wants will be done um, will be to activate in your experience as you walk in the spirit. Now, many times people will say, I'm praying, but nothing's happening. So let's explain that. If we as humans went into the water and tried to breathe and started to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, you're doing the right thing, but you're doing it in the wrong environment. Amen. Does that make sense? Are you guys praying for me? Amen. Amen. So many Christians pray they're doing the right thing, but we're doing it in the flesh. They're doing it in the wrong environment. And if you're doing it right, the right thing in the wrong environment, the right thing won't work. So just because you say your prayers in the morning, you say grace at dinner, you say your bedtime prayer, that's the right thing. But the question is, have you been walking in the right environment? Because if you're not walking in the right environment, doing the right thing won't work. And in fact, it can help kill you quicker. <laughs> I want you to be, he's saying, I want you to be consumed with being in my presence walking in the flesh he says will put 
you in a spiritual graveyard. But by walking in the spirit, you will put, um, by walking in, by the spirit will, will put you, and here's how you know, because you're no longer having to force things when you're in the spirit. Amen. But the Bible calls the spirit a wind, a wind it blows. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides us. He pulls on us. Now you can walk, you should walk, but you're walking on some, uh, you know, power. You're walking on some undergirding. You're walking on some strength because you're walking in the mind of the spirit consistent with the revelation and word of God so that you can override. Amen. So we want to walk in the spirit. And he also says, pray always in the spirit. Amen. So like we said, when you're in the evil day, we want to pray in the spirit because there's things that we don't know that God knows. And we want to be able to pray and commune with God. Amen. So we want walking in a spirit to be a lifestyle and not just a visit. Amen. Don't treat the spirit like a, a, a tree church. <laughs> Don't just come for a visit. Roll with me and stay in contact with me all day, every day, if you can. When we connect to God, if the timing is wrong, he'll say slow or wait. If the request is wrong, he'll tell us no. If we are wrong, he'll say grow. Amen. But if the request is right at the right time, and we are right sooner or later, he'll say go. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, this is just uh, <laughs> so much. I'm like, how much we're running out of time. I got to I got to try to hurry up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we want the timing to be right when we um, and know the environment we're in. But God will bring us through um, and he will speak to us and he'll tell us which direction to go. Amen. And he always has an answer for us. It may be wait. No. Yes. <laughs> but we have to be tapped into a spirit to recognize that answer. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's so much here. <laughs> I'm like, we want to end on a great note. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So God does what he wants to do. He gives you strength to deal with what you're dealing with. He does it in all kinds of ways, but however he decides to do it, you'll know he's right there and he's right there in the midst of you. He changes your perspective in the midst of your evil day. How, how many people have had that happen? Amen. He can change your whole perspective and allow you to go through the storm. And you know, he can go, he, you can go a long way with a change of perspective. It reminds me of a story of two hunters. And they found out in Alaska, these two hunters, that they were paying $5,000 for every wolf that was killed because it had overgrown, the area had been overgrown in the population of wolves. So they were creating an imbalance in nature and actually was a negative thing. So to get rid of some, some of the wolves, these two buddies got together and decided, we're gonna go to Alaska. <laughs> we're hunters, so let's kill some wolves for $5,000. So they got their gear, they pitched their tents. Tomorrow morning, they said, we're going to go out and kill some wolves, $5,000 a wolf. So they went to sleep to get ready for tomorrow. In the middle of the night, one of the men heard a noise. He turned on his light. He could see through the canvas. He was surrounded by wolves. 
He went to hunt wolves, and now the wolves are hunting him. There were 25 wolves surrounding his tent, and they were growling. I know, right? <laughs> As he put it up closer, he could see the teeth of the wolf. So they were ready attack to attack. He woke up his buddy, his friend, and he's like, Bob, get up, get up, get up, look. Bob said, what? He said, look, Bob, and Bob said, look, we're rich. Perspe perspective can change everything. Life wouldn't be a life without crisis, would it? You're either in one, just came out of one, or sooner or later, you'll, you'll run into one. Things that overwhelm you, well, um, you let's join in and pray. Let's pray through the crisis. The thing you're desperate for, God. And you can make sure you connect with your prayer through your obedience, amen? When prayer becomes connected with what God told you to do, not only do what you, you get to pray, you get to see Jesus, Jesus praying on your behalf, or as scripture says, to make intercession for us. Amen. So when you're in crisis and you need an intercessor, somebody to help you out, call on Jesus. It's so situated to be that your help is in your crisis. Amen. Amen. So our prayer is to allow Jesus to intercede and let's see what the miracle is that awaits us. Remember, your perspective is everything. But if we put on our whole armor, it's sitting there waiting for us to pull on, put on. And that's all I have. Praise the Lord for Ephesians this year. I've learned so much, and I hope you have too. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a hand for the word this morning. That was powerful, wasn't that? You know, Sister Tracy, she always brings forth a, a good word that will illustrate what God is speaking in his word. But she was teaching this morning out of the book of Ephesians, and that seems to be the book this morning because I was listening earlier to Deacon Wolf and his Sunday school message, and he was out of the book of Ephesians also. So it's just a double blessing. But she gave us the title of her word this morning are you dressed with your spiritual clothes on are you dressed with your spiritual clothes on she was gave us a little bit of background about the book ephesians six chapters very short book the author is paul the apostle written from 60 to 61 AD, and he was in prison at the time that he wrote it. That should tell you a whole lot about the book in itself. Many times we get overwhelmed in life with situations or circumstances that we feel we just can't continue on in our duties. But Paul wrote this from prison, and he had every reason to maybe, you know, stop or halt his ministry because of what was going on with him. But he persevered on. She also told us about the story of Paul, how, how Paul said he was the chief of sinners because of all that he did to persecute the church. 
to stop the ministry. And that if he could be saved, anybody can be saved. Because if God saved him, no matter what you might have done in your past, God can wash you white as snow. She also said that he wrote over two thirds of the New Testament was written by Paul. That's how powerful his ministry was. She said that there were three themes in the book of Ephesians, wealth, about your walk, and about your welfare. And, you know, I keyed in on these three because as I was preparing for today, God had mentioned those three words to me. Wealth, walk, and welfare. She said that as you go through life, journey, or even through this book, it's telling us in so many words that we're going to have problems. We're going to face issues. We're going to face turbulent times, but we have to stand no matter what. God has given us his spirit and his word that will get us through. If we stand, we have to take a stand. She said that the enemy we know what the enemy does. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. She said the attacks of the enemy are he'll come and he'll attack our health, our families, our finances, even our spiritual walk. But even in all of these, we got to stand. The church as a whole, as a body, is under assault, is under attack, continually. You know, we all like when the work week comes to a close, and those of us that have Saturday and Sunday off, we can take off and, you know, and get a little rest and, and do some of the other things in life that that we work so hard to do, but we have to understand, even though we might want to take off, the enemy does not. He's on his job 24 seven, 365 days out of the year, he's on his job. She went on to share with us that this is a spiritual battle. It is not about flesh and blood. It is not about the person that you might have to deal with that's been so negative in your life, but it is about that spirit that is within them. We have to see past that human being and recognize the spirit of Antichrist. As she was speaking, and talking about this, a thought came to mind that, you know, one of the devil's greatest accomplishments in this world is to convince people that he does not exist, that he is just a figment of, a, of their imagination or a fable, that he is an untruth. But just as you have good, there is bad. Just as you have a heaven, there is a hell. And just as we have the Lord Jesus, there is the devil. He is real. And all of the fallen angels that went with him, they are real. And they are on their job every day. That is why it is so important as a believer that we put on the armor, the full armor. As she went through it, she said that we need to 
Put on Christ. Plead the blood of the Lamb over every situation. Stand on the word of truth. Stand up for righteousness. Stand on peace that he provided to every partaker. The helmet of salvation that will protect our minds from all that goes on in this world. The shield of faith and the word of God that will help us in these turbulent times. Take a look around you. Look at everything that is going on. It is not by chance or accident that these things are happening. But as the time approaches of Christ's return, the devil is going about his business more and more. She said that Doctors, bankers, the government, family even, and sometimes even the church. We don't have the answers. Christ does. He said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. She said that we need to be diligent in our prayer life. That's how we can put on the armor. We all remember back when we were small little children and our mom taught us how to dress, what we needed to put on first and what went on after that. And then we put our shoes on. And then if it was cold outside, she said, no, you got to put your jacket on and, and I got a little hat for you and I got gloves for you. We remember those days how she taught us how to dress. Well, it's no different. God is teaching us how to dress spiritually so that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy. Because see, if we are not armored up, the enemy is liable to penetrate into your life and cause havoc in your family cause havoc in your marriage, cause havoc in everything that is connected with you. But if you have the armor on, you can withstand the attacks of the enemy. She went on to say that, you know, Bishop and, 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 and Mom, Pastor Hackett, taught us everything that we needed, gave us everything that we have needed through the Spirit, through the Word, through their teachings, that we can make the remainder of this journey. Because it is a journey. It is not easy. But it's not impossible with God. If you were on Wednesday night, you understood and heard the Word that what is impossible for man is not impossible for God. And I'll say this one last thing, because she touched upon this. How we fight each and every day with our spirit man and our flesh man. Our spirit man wants to do right by God, wants to take time and pray, wants to take time and study, wants to take time and meditate. On a Sunday morning, wants to get up, and come into the house and give God worship. But we're fighting each and every day with the flesh man who doesn't want to get up, said, I'm tired, I want to stay in and rest, who doesn't want to pray because he doesn't find it necessary, who doesn't want to, to fast, doesn't want to help others, doesn't want to do a whole lot of things. But it is a battle between the flesh and the spirit. Paul said it like this in Romans 7, 21. 
I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is ever present. For I delight in the law of God after the inner man or the spirit man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Because if we don't do more in the spirit than we do in the flesh, we are doomed unto death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself may serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. We war each and every day to do the right thing. And then she said in closing, This is a lifestyle. It's not just a visit. It's not just let me get up, go to church on Sunday, hear the message, or let me tune in on Wednesday night, see what's being said. Let me maybe I might get up on Friday morning and be a part of the prayer call. But see, if it is your life, these things will come automatically to you. But if it is just for a visit, then maybe you'll come and maybe you won't. But even as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we've made up our minds to serve the true and the living God. It is a lifestyle. It's not just a visit. But give God a hand for the word. I thank him for using Sister Tracy so mightily. We'll take time to have uh, a few thoughts from those that are here, if they would like to share. And then those that are on the Zoom will come to you next. So if you're ready, Raise your hand by hitting the bottom of the computer or clicking the, or hitting star six and star nine if you're on your phone. But is there anybody in the house this morning that would like to share what they've heard or give a thought? Thank the Lord. Thank you, sis, so much. That was an awesome, awesome word. I thank God so much because this is a, you know, it's a great reminder, um, so powerful. And, you know, that's could be why the enemy fights us so much because he doesn't want us to, to be in our prayer time, be in our tongues, make that sacrifice, you know. Um, one of the things that, that stood out to me that I was thinking about, there is fact. It's a fact that we are going to go through things and the enemy is going to attack us. That's a fact. Because he did the same thing to Jesus. To Jesus. Amen? But we, there's fact, but then there's truth. The truth is, in Luke 10, 19, God says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to, come, and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. There's facts, and there's the truth. Thank you so much, sis. God bless you. Amen. Awesome. I mean, you can get so there was so many nuggets out of that. Um, that was really good because there's fact and there's truth. And I always learned, and I think I learned it in church where 
you know, the movies that we see and some of these, you know, especially demonic type movies or scary movies, um, if they're, if it's fiction, then they got it from something real. So there's fact and there's truth. So I always learned that. So when I was, you know, watching, you know, these stories, crazy stories on TV, which I don't really watch a lot of TV now at all, but I learned a long time ago that anytime you're watching something on TV, that there's something real that they got it from. And um, when Pastor Harris said about, you know, how our parents taught us how to put on our um, clothes, you know, that was really a good analogy because I was thinking just this weekend because my little grandbaby, you know, got a, a little congestion, you know, and, you know, my husband and I are sure some of the elders, you know, have told her, put some socks on that baby's feet. You know, she needs some socks on her feet. You know, how, don't be going out the house with no blanket. Where's her coat at? Because that's me. Right. Where's her coat? It's cold outside. Don't just be wrapping her up in no blanket. Yep. She need a coat on. Yeah. <laughs> Go buy her a coat. You yep. know, I'm just saying, you know, so that the, the, um, the, you know, viruses, you know, even the colds won't get in. So we have to protect ourselves the same way, the same way spiritually we have to put on that armor so that was really a good reminder and it was also you know i remember you that dream you know many that was so long i think that was before we even came to before we came to uh, greater light yeah and so right praise the lord yeah that's so amazing how god will prepare you because it's not for just you it's for someone else and even like even before when i had that crazy dream and i'm a, i used to be afraid of cats and especially black cats and i remember i had a dream and i was holding on to this man's neck and he kept on saying are you ready are you ready and i was like no i was holding on for dear life because there was a swarm like a sea of black cats you know, and that represents evil. That's what it represented, yeah. evil. Yeah. And so I'm like, no, and I'm holding on. He kept on saying, are you ready? Yeah. And I kept saying, I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, but he said, you're ready. All so right. with bare feet, this is a dream now, with bare feet, I had to walk across these black cats All with right. my feet. Yeah. Come on now. God said, we will tread upon scorpions. That's right. That's what said. he said. <laughs> Amen. Wow. And he was preparing me even for the time when I was with her face to face with the enemy. Uh -huh. Through a person. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Rolling up my sleeves, as she's yeah. always said. I'm yeah. ready for the devil. Oh, Amen. On, no. But we have to remember to put on the armor yeah. from yeah. the head to the toe Toes. to the breastplate. The word, the sword of the spirit, so we can cut yes. that devil up. Yes, you know? So I thank God for the word, for the reminder, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the word is just so simple. Yes. If we would, if we would, when we're going through things, yes. seriously, if we're going through things, if we would just remember the word of God. That's because right. it's just that simple. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for that great reminder. That was awesome. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody else that would like to share this morning? Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord, real short. Um, your entire message just inspired the whole church. Mm -hmm. Stay prayed up. Mm -hmm. This yes. is why Pastor always told us, stay prayed up so we'll be ready because we're going to face everything out there in the world. When you, when you came in, you're talking about Put on that righteousness, put on, stand firm, put on that armor. We want to be ready. So stay prayed up. That's what I got. Praise God. Amen. 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 God is good. How can I not stand up and say something? Praise the Lord, because Sister Tracy just graced us with her presence and uh, allowing the Lord to use her and uh, bless the house of the Lord. So. Uh, I really do look forward to the saints going forth, and I'm, I'm Sister Tracy. She, you know, is here. Praise the Lord, and and you have a very special um, 
presence and gifts and, and all of us. Like when we come together in the house, it just like no one can come and bring what you bring. You know what I mean? You coming here, your presence, it's a blessing to all of us, you know? And so I'm just grateful that you were here to let the Lord use you. And I thank God for it. Amen. Thank you. Now we're going to go to the Zoom uh, for those that are there. And I want to see if our pastor is on first. Give him an opportunity. Pastor Elijah, go ahead, sir. Just go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord, sir. God bless everybody this morning. God bless you, Sister Tracy. It was an awesome, awesome word. And the thing about being prepared and actually in every case or every circumstance, and we'll know how to deal and how to use our protective covering to get through it. <laughs> the few things that stood out the most was, is pray without seeking, ceasing is what you said. And then to use our angels on our behalf to go to war for us as pastor, like you said, pastor would always call on Michael and send him with a vision in her mind of what, she wanted him to accomplish by where she was sending him to go to work or go to war. And it, the thing that goes with that is you said, don't wait till you're in a war or a battle to pray. You know, we have to utilize our prayer life to protect and guide us. And that prayer will relieve the heaviness, even the word you've been given to speak or deliver to the saints to the people of God, like you did this morning. And to stay in the realm of the spirit, walking in the spirit, <laughs> not just a visit was that, that was a good key right there. Because if you stay in the will and in the prayer of, and in the prayers of the Lord, but have your prayers before the Lord, then what can he not do? What will he not provide? What will he not complete? What vision will he not, will not give? Because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And are you dressed with your spiritual clothes? <laughs> we got to stay covered. Amen. I just thank you for all these good nuggets that came out of your word this morning. And I pray that God will continue to give you a deeper revelation of his word so you can continue to deliver it with the power you did this morning. And I thank you for it. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, Thank no you. problem. Thank Amen. you. That was awesome. It was. It was powerful. Yeah. Sister Glenda, yeah. I see you have your hand up. Sister Glenda, are you there? Go ahead. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm driving. That's why. <laughs> All but right. I just wanted a good words, Sister Tracy. Um, hold on, you guys. Just bear with me for a minute. Just bear with me for a minute. Oh, my God. Anyways, let me try to find it. So I am just want to piggyback on it. So I've been in Ephesians <laughs> last week. God gave me that word to put on his armor. So I just want to say that was a good word and it was confirmation and I'm just confirming it. Um, that's what God wants us to do, to put on his armor. So we won't, for me, so I won't have to keep fighting against the enemy and I know that I got the power to beat him. So God was really revealing to me last week and I have put it on Facebook as well, <laughs> um, Ephesians 6 and 10, because that's what he had me in, and that's where I've been in, in Ephesians. So you was right on time. 
So I thank you for that. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Glenda. Um, Thanks. Deacon Rodney. And then we're going to wrap it up uh, after Sister Madeline so we can move forward. Uh, let's see. Deacon, go ahead and unmute yourself. Amen. You hear me? We hear you. Don't praise God. Amen. Such a powerful, such a powerful, powerful back word. And, uh, as always, it's a Tracy that you deliver. You know, um, you know that you're gifted where God has you. And um, the thing that stands out is that, you know, we go through, and then you said, you know, you in our going worry. through, in our going through, um, do we, 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 give, we call on God and we praise him and, and all that stuff, but do we do it when, when nothing's happening and going on? Are we calling God? Are we, are we, are we uh, committed to say, God, you are our king and you are our savior? You know, though nothing is happening, yet it has not came to, uh, uh, fruition it has not came to, to pass of anything in, the, in my life that is reckless but yet have I given you thanks even though that nothing has happened nothing nothing crazy has happened you know it's like it's like saying that it, in this time before it comes to you before it gets there be ready then you say what the word you already heard the hell the double field preach and the, and the thing about that is we have so much of the word that has been preached into each and every one of our lives that we should be able to stand fully and not be uh, 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 shaken for what the devil has come to do. We know his, we know his, 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 his you know, there's nothing different. All he has is a disguise, you know, a cover up. But then it must come. It must come to the full wishing. It must come to light. And so when it comes to light, you already know. Okay, well I already knew that was gonna happen because that's how he works. He's sneaky. He, he's conniving. You know, he doesn't. He, he, he doesn't do the demeanor in, in such a way that he can he can hide himself away. You know who he is. We know who he is. All we gotta do is believe in God and believe in His word. So it was a powerful word. I mean, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta walk this world we heard. We gotta, we gotta be ready. We can't be getting ready. We have to be ready. Mm -hmm. So praise God for that word. This word was powerful, you know. And may God continue to use you and bless you and keep your family and you covered. Also, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, Deacon. Sister Madeline, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to give God praise and thank you, Sister Tracy, for that wonderful, awesome word. It was awesome. Um, I have I have taught on that word before, and I can't constantly go to Ephesians and read it over and over, the sixth chapter about putting on the whole armor. And you're right, we have to have on our whole armor. We have to be dressed for the for what we're going to face. And I thank you again. Pray for us. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Madeline. It was a very powerful word this morning. You know, the thought that comes to me, and it's one my wife uh, brought forth many years ago, but she said, you know, much prayer, much power. No prayer no power. So we have to stay prayed up because we never know when things are going to happen. And you see the calamities that are in the world today. And anytime there's great calamity, the first thing they say is that everybody needs to pray. But before that comes to pass, who are they praying to? You know, do they pray or do they just pray only when calamity comes? We want to call on God all the time, not just when troubles come. So I thank God for the word and thank him for using Sister Tracy. It's been a powerful book that she has taught out of this year and that we all have learned something new and can stand upon the word. So at this time, we're going to move on with our service. We're going to take up our Sunday school offering uh, which helps us in 
in the cost of this building and helps us in uh, the Zoom broadcast and providing that. Everything takes money to operate and we appreciate your giving. So at this time, those that are in the house, uh, if you're giving this morning, those that are on the Zoom, if you would like to give and participate, go to our website, www.greaterlight.org, and you can participate by clicking on the giving tab. We thank you again for your gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. And those that are in the house, if you will stand with me this morning, and we'll have a word of prayer as we close out. <clears throat> Father God, we just want to come to you first and foremost, giving you thanks for who you are. Thanking you for your holy presence here this morning. Thanking you for using your servant, Sister Tracy, breaking the bread of life, feeding the sheep this morning. We thank you for those words. Now we ask, Lord, continue to bless Sister Tracy. We pray, Lord, that you will touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I pray covering and protection around her whole entire family. Yes. We plead the blood of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that you will continue to, to give her great wisdom and depths of knowledge of your word and understanding that as she would come forth to teach, that she will be teaching unto the salvation of many, I pray. I also pray over the words that we have heard that they will find good ground and that they will bring forth much fruit amongst your people, I pray. I also lift up the offerings that have been received this morning for the building of your kingdom, Father God, that you will bless the hands of the giver and give back unto them a thousandfold, if not more so, for their faithfulness, Lord. Now I ask, take us from this part of the service, looking with great expectations of the service to come. And we pray, Father God, that you will keep each and every one of us in our households until the next time you would bring us together again. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So we're going to take a short intermission, and we will resume again at about 20 till. For those that are on the Zoom, you're welcome to stay on, or if you do get off, make sure you get back on at 20 minutes till, and we'll start up our next service. Thank you. Amen. Amen.